You might be wondering why you've been dragged along here today. Left alone in a room with four cons and no screws. You look worried. Well, I'm here to tell you a story. We're all here to tell you a story. Trouble is, there's only four of us, so you're going to have to bear with us. Now, let me quickly start by saying, you'll have no trouble from us if you just sit there and shut up. You might not like what we've got to say, but sit there and shut up. Survived in the nick. Hi, right, boys. Think it's time you told them who you are? Sammy Kershaw, five years. Fraud. Albert Shrimper, I's got three years for a burglary from a dwelling place. John Edwards, safe cracker, 18 months left of a three year stretch. And I'm Wallace. <clears throat> GBH, on a major scale. Cracked in a few heads when they tried to arrest me. And I smashed open a few more when they tried to get me in the van. You might say folks round here regard me as a bit of an hard man. No one messes with me. I'll tell you that for free. So sit there, shut up, and we'll tell you why you've been dragged along here today. Kershaw, do you want to take it from here? Thank you, Mr Wallace. You have indeed been brought here for a purpose. Some of you may already have heard about Longthorpe in the news. Her Majesty's prison Longthorpe is semi-famous. Has been for some years. It had the highest incidence of suicide and attempted suicide among first time inmates aged under 25 in the United Kingdom. I say had, but that's all changed now. Now, Longthorpe is famous for something other than suicides. And that's what we're here to tell you about tonight. Each of us will play a number of roles in a little performance that will enlighten and inform you. Now, we haven't got much of a set, so we'll... Just... <laughs> we haven't got much of a set, so we'll just have to make do amend, so to speak. So sit tight and pay attention. Yeah! <laughs> this is the story of Paige, a new inmate, 23 years old, and his first time in the day. Matthew Ellis Page, you have been tried and found guilty by a jury of your peers. It has been found that on May 17th last, you were apprehended in possession of Class A drugs with intent to supply said drugs to persons unknown. This offence has been aggravated by your location when arrested as you were within 300 metres of the front gate of a school. <coughs> Due to the fact that you continue to deny your guilt, a trial has been held at considerable expense to the taxpayer. Your utter refusal to show remorse ensures me that I am right in passing what would otherwise be a harsh sentence for a first-time offender. But a clear message must be sent to people like you, who act as parasites, preying upon the weak and the helpless. Matthew Ellis Page, I sentence you to a total of six years in prison, and I hope this sentence will give you the time to see the error of your ways and protect the public from vultures like you. Let it be known that we are no longer prepared to watch drug dealers poison the youth of this town. Take him away. Good morning, Governor. <laughs> This is Paige, a new inmate just processed this morning. It looks like Paige will be with us 
for a number of years. Thank you, Mr. Morton. Good morning, Paige. I expect you're wondering why I brought you here to have a chat. It's not something you expect on your first day in your new home, I'll wager. I have asked for you to be brought here so that I can look into your eyes. Very important eye. They say they are the windows of the soul. Now, I understand to deny any part in the events which lets your trial and attention at this establishment. I also know that you've never received a sentence previously. Indeed, you have a hitherto on a known record. Do you have anything to say? You may speak freely. Uh, no, sir. I don't have anything to say. I believe I, I said it all in my trial and it wasn't enough. Uh, that leaves me with nothing to say, sir. I just want to keep my head down and, uh, and do my time, sir. Oh, an admirable sentiment, Paige. But you really need to consider the reality of the situations with which you are now faced. I am sure you can read the newspaper to watch the news. H.M.P. Longthorpe has been in the news lately for all the wrong reasons. In the last eight months, we have had two inmates commit suicide and three more make attempts. All of them are first-time inmates, young men cut down in their prime because they couldn't handle the pressures of life in one of Her Majesty's prisons. So it is incumbent upon me to meet all first-time inmates and explain that you don't have to succumb to the pressures of life in these walls in any drastic fashion. There are people you can talk to. You can talk to trained counsellors. And if necessary, my door is always open to inmates. I'd sooner do that than witness the grief of one more family, because incarceration has won the fight over humanity and dignity. Do you have a anything to say now, Paige? Uh, 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 no, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, very well. Mr. Morton, would you ask the guard outside to escort the prisoner to his cell, and then I would like a word with you, if I may. Very good, sir. As you wish. Oh, I'm worried, Mr. Morton. About pay, sir? No, about the reputation of long thought, Mr. Morton. But the last two suicide attempts were unsuccessful, sir. Your outreach programme seems to be having an effect, sir. Yes, but that's not really the problem. I was speaking at a conference recently, and as a result, I received this letter! From the palace, sir. They are planning to visit Longport. Exactly, Mr. Morton. They want to see what progress we are making in the rehabilitation of the population. A royal visitor will be coming to this prison in a little over four weeks. Well, what do you intend to do about it, sir? Well, I have had an idea in my head for some time now, and I think it would be the perfect opportunity to give it an airing. Sir? The arts, Mr. Morton. The arts! The arts? I want to expose the prison population to the arts, to show them some of the finer things in life, to give them hope and aspiration. It will be perfect for the royal visit. We can hold a concert for our guests of honour, something for the men to aim for. What do you envisage, sir? Dance, Mr. Morton! <laughs> I aim to establish a dance group that will be the prison's length and breadth of these shores. In the Philippines, one prison has been utterly transformed all down to one man. One man had the vision to get the prisoners dancing. He filmed them performing Michael Jackson's thriller. But you know, girl, <laughs> It's now on YouTube. It's made a global phenomenon. Violence and in intimidation are all things of the past now. Drug dealers, rapists and killers now compete for the prime role in a dance routine. With all due respect, sir. And that's my goal, Mr. Morton. To get the prisoners of Longthorpe dancing, it will be the first year in the UK all my prisoners swaying to the hits of the 1980s. I honestly don't see it, sir. I mean, ain't there issues off for human rights or something? But we need this, Mr. Morton. We need something to lighten the, the load of these young men, to show them the finer things in life. These men will never go for it, sir. With all due respect, they're convicted felons. Simply won't wash. Think about it. Men competing for the chance to dance before the Queen. It's the perfect idea. I'm not sure I would say perfect, sir. I have had this idea on the backbone for some years now, simply waiting for the right moment, and now fate has doubles a hand. 